New anti-Israel protests breaking out in New York City. This is Republican candidates call out the disturbing rise of anti-Semitism on college campuses and radical protesters who've been terrorizing Jewish students. And we need leadership at the top in the United States of America that restores our founding values and that has no place for this kind of anti-Semitic hate. And what is Biden doing? Not only is he not helping the Jewish students who are being persecuted, he is launching an initiative to combat so-called Islamophobia. No, it's the anti-Semitism that's spiraling out of control. Right. We are about taking care of people, not going and making them live in fear because some other terrorist activity says they want to destroy them. Compare that with the unhinged anti-Semitism spewing from the Democrat Party. Recently censured Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib got asked point blank to explain what she meant when she endorsed the pro-Hamas slogan, from the river to the sea, which calls for the eradication of Israel. I'm asking my colleagues, don't distort the words of my residents. Many people in this movement for human rights for Palestinians have always centered it around coexistence. Uh, you hear them calling for that uh, and saying that, you know, no matter your faith, your ethnicity, your background, you should be able to live uh, without fear, without discrimination, without this kind of inequality that, you know, Netanyahu's extremist party and his leadership has been pushing. And now, radical Rashida's anti-Semitic comments are embarrassing America on the world stage. Brett Baer has an exclusive interview with Benjamin Netanyahu tonight at 6 p.m. The Israeli prime minister is slamming Tlaib's comments. Are you surprised by all the pushback, not just in the United States with these protests, but around the world? Well, the river to the sea, from the river to the sea means there's no Israel. From the Jordan River to the Mediterranean, which is a tiny area, by the way, uh, that encompasses Israel, there is no Israel. And so what uh, this congresswoman is calling for is policide and genocide, the elimination of the Jewish state, the one and only Jewish state of the Jewish people. So that's, that's absurd, and I salute the Congress for censoring her. But it's beyond that. I think the protests that you're seeing I'm sure it includes some naive people, but there are a lot of people who know exactly what they're saying. All right, Jessica, yesterday we talked about what she thought, what we thought she meant, but today she was asked specifically. And she says that from the river to the sea is actually about peaceful coexistence. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> um, and if she really thought that, it wouldn't have taken her several days to prep that answer, right? That's something... If you are part of the Palestinian community, and that is a phrase that you use so regularly that's being chanted in your community, that you know how to explain it. So I maintain my position from yesterday that I'm not buying it. I also think, you know, you run to a friendly interviewer about it, put out an op-ed, do interviews with everybody. Everyone who wants to talk to me about this, they want to talk to me about my past comments you made on The Intercept podcast. Um, a few years ago, um, talking about a one-state solution, and I'm pretty sure that her one-state solution is not that Israel rules over Gaza and Palestine. It's the other way around. So I'm not into it. Um, it's interesting to hear Netanyahu talk about what's going on here. I think this is the first time that we've heard comment from him on it. Um, and it really speaks to the power and the import of what's happening across America and in huge metropoles like in London and Paris and how disturbing it is, especially for the leader of Israel. And I, I'm no fan of Netanyahu and his policies, um, but it, it's very striking to me to hear that and that he called out that there are for sure some people who are naive, but that he doesn't buy it, that most people don't understand. And I think that maybe we have been giving too many hall passes to people who are absorbed in their TikTok feeds, and that people do understand more than we think about this. Certainly, the faculties at these universities and people's, people in positions of power, and I just comp I continue to be deeply disturbed by what's going on. You know, Dana, last night the candidates talked about um, how they would handle the anti-Semitism that's going on on the university campuses. Did you have a chance to hear about what their plans were? I mean, I, I listened to the whole thing. I think that all of the, like part of it was about the visas, the student visas. That mm -hmm. was once something that you, that will, you'll get into a big free speech debate on that. But maybe that's a debate worth having. And, and, and I also think, though, that there is a deep... Um, I think maybe, I can't remember which one it was, talked about just, this is a leadership issue. I mean, I've been Vivek. But I don't, there was no disagreement 
on the stage on many issues, mm -hmm. including this one. But R Rashida Tlaib, she has no incentive for this to end. She's making a gazillion small dollar contributions because she was censured. She's getting all the attention that she could ever want. Her people that support her, they love this moment. So she has no incentive to stop. So that's not going to end. I'm glad she was censured. The mass brawl outside of the Museum of Tolerance is about as on the nose <laughs> for this moment than you could possibly get. Those protesters went to that venue on purpose because they wanted to attack them. The other thing is, can you imagine for a moment what it would look like today if a Muslim man had been murdered by some alt-right white protesters? Oh, forget it. That's all we would be talking about. We'd be having a national conversation right mm. now about all these ills. Instead, the media is not covering that at all. And the protest violence is pretty much consistently coming from one side. And it's not the people who are accused of being the oppressors. You know, Greg, what, what Dana referenced was that Gal Gadot screening of the Hamas terror attack, yeah. which apparently uh, she got the actual video of what went on. And why did these people the Hamas people want so much to suppress the reality of what happened. Well, they're living there. In order to maintain the conflict in the past, you have to deny the present atrocity. Mm -hmm. Because if you, you can't say the, you have to have the historical context and then you have to question whether this really happened. I'm noticing really weird bedfellows, young liberal white women who daily reject the misogyny and sexism of the patriarchy, marching alongside the most misogynist anti-female men who had a brawl in front of the Museum of Tolerance. I would warn to liberal women, the reason why they haven't come for you yet is because they're busy with the Jews. Yeah. Uh, but don't worry, they're going to get back to you and put you in their place. Because they're, you know, Hamas isn't for equal rights, in case you didn't notice. In my neighborhood, what sprung up, uh, I think it was last night I just saw the posters all over of Gaza victims, right? Yeah. To which I say, good for you. That's your right. But guess what? They're still up. Young Jews so far haven't been tearing them down. That's the contrast between delusion and decency. Tearing down po posters is caused by a delusion that denies the atrocity, so you can tear it down. The other is people who just want their kids to get free and are okay with your posters. What you brought up, it's amazing how Paul Kessler's death came and went. The details are still in dispute, but it was ruled a homicide. But none of the mainstream media seems to care about that. They're not picking it apart or, or analyzing the video. Of course, if it was a, like you said, if it was a young pro-Palestinian, we'd be back to 2020. Mm -hmm. And on CNN and MSNBC hearing about mostly peaceful riots. And then there would be a, a need to defund anything that is related to Jews. But because he's not a member of the designated oppressed class, Paul Kessler vanishes, much like the trans killer manifesto. If it doesn't fit into the narrative, there it goes. All right, Jesse, 200. Go ahead. You want to talk? Go ahead. I would say this seven years ago was Charlottesville. And there was a chant, Jews will not replace us. And Joe Biden and the Democrats seized on that chant. Joe Biden ran for president based on that. And they made everybody in the MAGA movement look anti-Semitic. Remember when you went like this mm -hmm. in a picture? Mm -hmm. That was anti-Semitic. Yeah. Just the other day, Hillary called Trump Hitler. They had articles on NBC that going to the gym meant you were a neo-Nazi, right? <laughs> and then really when it was about saving lives, when the rubber hit the road and Israel was attacked, who circled the wagons around Israel? It was the entire Republican Party immediately did. But large subsets of the left, not only didn't they circle the wagons, they sided with the people that attacked the Jews. And now you're seeing massive protests by these people all over, and they're chanting some pretty nasty stuff. And I just remember, if you're in a rally, let's say you went to Charlottesville that day and you didn't want these statues torn down for historical reasons and the guy next to you is chanting about Jews will not replace us I might maybe march the other direction and try right no these marches they are not getting thinner no. these marches are building and that tells me this is a growing anti-semitic movement entirely on the left and the Democrats in the media cannot reconcile it because it doesn't go with what they've been selling 
the last eight years. Okay. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.